learned more advanced proof by contradiction. I first wanted to talk about this bag. Uh, my great teacher, Dr. Kovan Pillai, gave this to me. In class, we learned advanced proof by contradiction. And with that, I'm going to be showing you why root 3 is irrational. And this is a geometric proof. So, first, let's imagine that root 3 is rational. We assume the opposite. And that the lowest terms it can be expressed in is p over q, right? All right, so p over q is root 3, right? So p is equal to q root 3. So now, do you remember the proportions of a 30, 60, 90 triangle? Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I was kind of glitching out there. This is, if we call this q, then this is q3, and this is 2q. But wait a second, hold up a second. Wait a second, this is q3, but that's also p. So now, let's draw this circular sector p. So let's actually make this a little bigger. By a little, I mean a lot. So let's call this O, this A, and this B. And I'm calling this O because I want you to imagine it as the center of a circular arc. So now we're going to, let's say it cuts at C. So now I'm going to draw the tangent to uh, this uh, sorry. I'm going to draw a tangent to this arc at C. As a result, it's obviously perpendicular to OB. So we're going to have another, let's call this D. We're going to have another smaller 30, 60, 90 triangle in there. Where this is B, this is C, and this is D. Triangle B, C, D. Alright. So now, what about this fellow? Quadrilateral OADC. Well, we know if this is P, this must also be P, right? So now, what can we do with that? Well, we know this entire thing is 2Q. So that means that this length has to be 2Q minus P. So, if 2Q minus P is our short side, then our long side, or BD, has to be 4Q minus 2P, which is twice that. 4q minus 2p. So then, what about this? ad. Well then, 4q minus 2p and ad have to sum up to q. So it's going to be 2p minus 3q. So, now, what can we do? Well, you might realize that dc and ac are both the same. And I'll show you why. Because, let's draw do first. That gives us 2 15, 75, 90 triangles. Yeah, I know you haven't heard of those ones before. So our 15, 75, 90 triangles, uh, one of their sides is P, and their long sides are both P, and their angles, they're, they both have right angles, and they have the same hypotenuse. So their, uh, their hypotenuses are the same, they both have a right angle, and both of their sides, both of their long sides are P. So that means that by side angle side, they must be equivalent. So that means DC, the short side of this one, is equal to AD, the short side of this one. So that means 2P minus 3Q is this. Wait a second. Wait a darn second. But that means that now we've got in something in even smaller terms, 2p minus 3q. Because obviously, the ratio of the big side of an equilateral triangle to a small side is defined as root 3. But wait a second, we already have a really big triangle. We already have a really big triangle with sides that should be able to. Okay, you know what? I'll prove it algebraically. So the ratio of the long side to a short side is. 2p minus 3q over 2q minus p. And this has to be equal to root 3 by definition. But here's the darn thing. Here's the darn problem. This, let's see what the top is. 
This is 2p minus 3 cubed. Is that less than p? Probably, because we know p has to be less than 3 cubed. After all, root 3 is always less than 3. What about 2q minus p? Well, we've always known that 2q minus p is less than q. After all, q is less than p. A 1 is less than root 3. So that means we've just expressed it in smaller terms than the lowest terms. So p and q, the lowest terms, can never exist. Those terms are going get, to keep getting lower and lower and lower. So there are no terms in which to express root 3. So that means that root 3 cannot be irrational. So if it's not irrational, then it has to be rational. And that's the proof by contradiction process. Thank you everybody for watching.